You're late. I got held up. You missed our appointment. I know. It's all right anyway, I've got it rescheduled. Oh. Yeah, so we're in in an hour. You know, apparently people always cancel last minute, you know, can't go through with it. Oh. You're right. What's wrong? Have I done something? No. So what's the matter? Do you love me? Of course. Do you love him? What? Do you love him? I don't know, right? I don't know. What I do? And I don't want to... I don't want to do this anymore. Oh, uh, not here. Then where? Where? When? In an hour? <laughs> Typical. When things get a little... Just a little... Shit! When things get a little shit, I leave. Me. I... I... I realise something. You okay? I think you just... No. What? Nothing. Say it. For years. For years we've spoken about choice. Having the choice to be together, create a life together, build a family together. We found the perfect place, person and time to do this. And we made that choice. We made that promise that we will love each other. Love him. Oh, we didn't know then. So many families managed to cope. So many mothers managed to cope. There are support groups for parents with children who have disabilities. Meetups, outings, socials. I found loads online, free ones, online. I called some on the way, they have space. I signed us up. That's why you were late? Yes. So you really thought this through? Yes. So you don't want the abortion no more? No. Considering how difficult it was to get to this point, how hard it was, how scary it was, how happy we were, how happy we are, how happy I am. I don't want to go through this anymore. No. It's my egg. But it's my body. Choice. Options. We have loads of options that we haven't explored. The woman said she can team us up with other parents who are in a similar situation to us. Right. We can get advice, support, maybe even funding. Wow, hand us. We haven't considered our options. What options? What choices do we have? It's not as simple as you think. Things are different now. <coughs> are they? Are they really? Because from where I'm sitting, we might as well be in the 80s. 
Questions are being asked, but nothing is being answered. People are held more accountable now. Excuse more. Written off as mentally unwell. It was a mistake. I was defending myself. Things haven't changed. I've just been gentrified. Gentrified? Oh, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a lot. Yeah, I know. But I need you to help me. To help us. Because I'm not sure if I'm strong enough to do this alone. And I know it's not going to be easy. What is? But this is something that I think we should do. Because we ain't getting any younger and the risks of... I need you, Kat. I can't. I just thought. I just thought that I could make you. make you happy. Sorry. Liz, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that, that my mind can't understand regular and clear apologies. I just, it's just, that's not what I did. That's not what we'd expected. It's not what we expected. I know. So you know that I'm angry, upset. Fuck it. I'm scared. I'm really fucking scared. We. What? We. <laughs> I'm just as scared as you. <clears throat> we are scared. Why don't we just... No. But we could. I've always dreamed about being a protector. Having something that needs me, relies on me. Dogs, cats, you. <laughs> Him. <coughs> Having a purpose, a reason to wake up every day, knowing that someone else needs me or relies on me. It makes me feel important. I understand that you want to leave. I, I do too. This place smells like piss and dead people. But, but before we do, before we leave, I need to know where we stand. Why I stand. Be before we leave, before you leave, Where do I stand? Look, maybe it's a metaphor for life. Like, that great things, things that are meant to be exciting. Like Nando's. Nando's being delivered by delivery. <laughs> or having a baby, your first baby, your beautiful fucking girlfriend. Liz. Liz, I'm fearful, okay? I'm really fucking fearful. Our son. Our disabled son. What we've stereotyped for the way that he looks, the way that he is. That every time he leaves the flat, the world will see a label. 
were projected a distorted painting on him. Of him, a thief, a drug dealer, a murderer, a black thug. That on the outside, he depicts everything that the Daily Mail warned us about black youth. But you see on the inside, <coughs> he's drawing maps of a world you can't even experience. That every time he gets stopped, pinned, dropped and held down, that he won't understand why. Why the world, the world of police, the world of authority, that's meant to protect him. Supposed to help him, or stop him, search him, and strip him of what dignity he has. Because every time he leaves the flat, every time he chases their pavements, my mind will be chasing the thought of, will I see him again? Will we see him again? Will we? We can't keep him. But we could. We can't afford to keep him. It's not that I don't love you or him. I just love him too much to see him suffer. But he won't. What, be held back by the two things that he can't change? The two things I wouldn't change about him. But I can't afford to see him suffer, Liz. Like so many men, so many black mothers have suffered before. I refuse to have my name stamped on a headline with tears rolling down my face, my weed fucked up because I can't sweat it. Can I sweat it days? <laughs> days, weeks and years resting on my shoulders, stitching pain under my eyes reflecting the world, the story of my dead son. Fuck that. I refuse to be a statistic on a list of broken lives, broken boys and broken mothers. I refuse to have his, map, his life mapped out like that. So, so what I'm saying is, if you want to keep him, that's fine. But I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can.